going to get even more interesting. Don't tell me. I want to know how many people do we he have here today who are here for the first time? Oh, put your hand down. All right, great. Welcome. Come back, please. Um, and uh, for presenters, we love to have you keep coming back. Uh, this is not a uh, uh, an organization. This is not an educational event where uh, uh, you come, you make your presentation, and never come back. That's your choice, but we'd love to have everybody keep coming. Um, we are one of, last we checked, uh, at least what Marion and I were told when we were in, when we were in Kansas City, by the end of September, they anticipated having 60. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's a big deal we went, though. Yeah, um, 56 on the website. We believe they're, uh, as of the end of September. So, 56 to 60 uh, uh, countrywide, and we're about the smallest uh, community in the United States that is privileged to have this uh, organization and be linked up with uh, the uh, Kaufman Foundation. Um, it's a simple process, uh, six minutes each for the presenters, and uh, there is a trap door and it constantly moves wherever they move, so uh, we'll give them fair warning, followed by uh, about 20 minutes of Q&A from the rest of us. And um, so, with that, uh, no further ado, uh, I want to introduce Robert Blumrich and Pat Ballard, the Barncast. Good morning, and uh, thanks for having us. We, uh, we, we came once last week and then got uh, offered a, an opportunity to present our idea and what we're doing. I'm Pat Ballard. I'm Rob Lumbrick. Rob Lumbrick, and we are uh, co-creators of the Barncast. Now, what in the world is the Barncast? Uh, we came up with an idea several months ago uh, in my barn. I have an old tobacco barn, and we thought it'd be cool to, to record uh, some of our music in the barn. We had a 24-channel uh, mixer and a reel-to-reel, -reel, old analog reel-to-reel -reel tape kind of donated to us. And so we set it up in my barn, and my barn is an old tobacco barn. And it's dusty, and there's a, there's a ceramic pig, and there's all kinds of stuff in the barn. And so we started that process, and we decided very quickly that dust and uh, animals and raccoons and all this is just too much. So we found another barn that was much more useful to us. So uh, we started, uh, and uh, so we created this space inside this barn, and we, we record local musicians uh, in the barn, and then we uh, put it back, we put it on the internet. We have uh, a Facebook page, a uh, Twitter account, we have Podomatic, we're on YouTube, and we also have uh, thebarncast.com, thebarncast.com. You can't find it on Google or anything. You have to go to the search bar. And find that. So uh, we started inviting artists out, and uh, we created the space. And we've got uh, two appropriate. This is appropriate. We have two bowling lane approaches as our stage, side by side. And uh, we're recording on. We're recording on the reel to reel, and uh, then we play that back into the computer, and then download it that way. Um, typically, the format of the barncast is. Uh, we do an intro, we do one song, we do a little interview period, another song, and then an outro. So we try to keep it under 10 minutes because people's you know, attention spans are a little short. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing. And we've uh, had a bunch of artists in the uh, Barncast so far. We've got six episodes up. I really well, and we're about to have seven today. At 9 o'clock, uh, we typically, what we do is we publish the, uh, we publish the URL to the actual podcast on Facebook noon. However, if you subscribe to us on automatic.com or iTunes, then you can get the episode at 9 o'clock. So we want to try to encourage followers and subscribers. Uh, that way we have a, a more built-in audience for each episode. Right. So um, we're, yeah, today's our, we drop at noon. Uh, Chad Estes is our guest today. You can go back and you can uh, go to thebarncast.com. I'll let Rob share with you some of the technical aspects. I'm kind of the Walmart greeter of the barncast. <laughs> <laughs> when they come out to the uh, bar and I go out and meet them and grab their stuff and carry it in, and then Rob handles all the technical stuff to see is the tech guru. So I'll let him take Well, I'm not going to let Pat downplay his role that much because he also makes contact with the artist. 
he is well plugged into the music scene. And even though I have been in this community for eight years now, uh, working as the technical director at the Glenma Center, I have not really had much of a chance to really meet a lot of the local artists around here. I meet all the people coming through. I meet all the people who are coming through and going away. And so the local, the local scene is his specialty. He brings a wealth of knowledge and uh, relationships to that. Now, what uh, what we what we try and do, obviously, we keep it up. We try to keep it at about ten minute mark. And the only reason we try to keep it at the ten minute mark is because it's impossible to fit two songs in an interview and intro and outro under five minutes. We like to be able to give people our information as quickly as they can, as we can and in a way that we have a completely focused audience on us. We want to make sure that, that their attention span is, that their attention is not divided while they're listening to the barncast. This does a few things. It, it prevents the barncast from being background noise, and it also encourages people to give us a try. Uh, we, we, as Pat said, we record the old equipment, which has presented its own uh, range of issues because it's aging. And uh, I know that as I have aged, I've needed more and more maintenance. <laughs> and the equipment is so much worse than that because it doesn't regenerate all the time. So it, re it relies on somebody else to fix all the rubber parts and the, all the moving mechanisms that today's machinery does not need. However, we have such, it, the benefits of using the old tape uh, are so much more than just the sound that you get off of it. The musicians come into the barn and they see the tape rolling, you know, and they see the old, this dusty old board that, you know, sometimes has a woolly worm crawling on it. That's pretty cool because it actually, as it crawled along the board, it picked up some dirt and stuff. But anyway, uh, so nature cleaning, cleaning goes up. But, so this is what we do, and it's a lot of fun. We've had a great response so far. Uh, we have artists coming out of the woodwork contacting us, and it's such a cool way, uh, it's just been a cool way to do things. Yeah, one other thing, I know we're out of time, but one other thing that uh, we, we do is, we don't just bring artists in and do two songs. We bring them in and do anywhere from two to four songs. And if you have two songs, you can be on the Barncast. Uh, but if you've got more than that, lots of artists we have have 20 songs, you know. But we, we record four more and keep it in the can so we can possibly use it as a future day. So we're out of time. I guess we're ready for questions. Questions. Yes, sir. Perfect. Yes, sir. It's cool. It's fun. You're enjoying it. How are you going to make money? Great question. Yeah. <laughs> got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Do, as a matter of fact, I mean, do you sell ad space in there? This is, uh, we, we're really, uh, to be really honest, we're just, uh, we're flying by the seat of our pants. This thing is just taken off in our numbers on Podomatic and uh, 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 Facebook likes. Everything just, it kind of blew up. So, yeah, how are we going to make, how are we going to have the barn cast uh, be a revenue generator? We have considered uh, ad space on the website itself, ad space on Facebook. Um, once we get our YouTube numbers up, um, advertisers will approach us for uh, to, to advertise on our space. You know, we get 85 million hits. When we, when we finally get Taylor Swift in the barn, <laughs> when we get 85 million hits, they're going to be coming to us. But for right now, we're considering uh, most of our action is local, but we do have a global audience. And that, that's really the impetus behind the whole thing, is to give local artists a global stage. It's one thing to go down and play a gig for... 20 people, and that's all well and good, but when you've got somebody in Finland that's dying for music in, in, in uh, Kentucky, and they are, I mean, the people are all over the world. Um, the music culture here is so uh, diverse, and it's just wonderful, and so I think the world needs to hear that. So, long story short, um, ad space on the uh, website, I don't really like to look at it like we're selling ads. We're, we're really, want supporters that believe in the, in the idea and believe in the vision and that want to come <clears> on board with us on that. So more, sort of more of the NPR model, if you will. Right. 
sponsors or supporters? Right. We've, the, way, the things that we've considered are really more of a, a hybrid of like an NPR and a commercial model. You know, we, we don't mind uh, putting a sticker up in the barn so that it is visible, highly visible for people watching our YouTube channel. Uh, we have released a YouTube video now. Product placement, possibly, mm -hmm. in the future. And, uh, <coughs> and, but we also want people you know, to support what we're doing. You know, we want people to support, by supporting what we're doing, they're also supporting the local uh, musicians. And so we are really, <coughs> it's cool to have this global reach, but we're really concentrating on our local presence. Do you, uh, do you ever anticipate, uh, because I know people here are looking for entertainment and places to go and everything, do you ever envision having uh, uh, shows with these artists and, uh, yes. and that could bring you money because everybody wants to pay to hear their person play yes, or we, sing. We have, been, uh, we have been getting told about uh, different experiences with uh, house concerts. Mm -hmm. That apparently is a huge on the rise. Uh, major artists are doing house concerts because they'd rather play for 60 to 70 people who are there intently to see them, who want to actually pay attention to what's going on, uh, than you know, 2,000 people. Well. Uh, Hundred people in the bar are talking. <laughs> they're not listening. Right. Yeah. 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 There are three people in the back straining to hear what yeah. that artist is doing on the stage, and everybody else is on Facebook. And as an as an artist, that's it's really it's frustrating, and it's really frustrating to do that. So yes, the answer is we are considering uh, opening up the bar and inviting people uh, to uh, select shows. So, you know, get a bigger barn. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, part, of, out of part of the part of the appeal of it is that it is a small space. Right. Yeah, you know, we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to transform it into you know several hundred person capacity. Yeah. It's a small space. Uh, if you if you look at our YouTube uh, release, which is Johnny Keys, uh, you can really get a feel of what it's like to be in. Uh, two questions. One, you have all these aspiring artists or local artists that you're trying to give a larger platform to. What I don't notice on your website is you selling their, their products on there. So I think if you had a component on that as a percentage basis and sell some of your CDs and that as a contractual obligation, if then when they do get large, you still have that opportunity and that gives you continuing revenue for those people. Can I miss you back to that? Yeah, we, that, yeah, that was an item we had. Um, the, the extra four songs that we're doing, what we want to do is create, when we get the infrastructure, we do it on the website, create a backstage pass where artists, when they hear that, people when they hear the artists, well, I like that. Mm -hmm. They can click on the backstage pass and they go backstage and they can purchase merchandise mm -hmm. uh, from the artists. They can uh, links to the other artists' pages um, and purchase their songs directly from the Barncast. Mm -hmm. Now, the Barncast, would then turn around, we can track all of that uh, web through the web and um, give the artist a portion of that money and then the Barncast uh, keep a portion of that as well. And then also, um, you, you said you were using iTunes, are you using on a monetized basis where they can purchase those downloads or are you doing it as a free download? The Barncast itself is a free is a free download at this point. We considered that in the beginning to make it, but we figured, eh, let's, let's start this thing out and do it free. Yes, that's the second. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's good that you're there. How many downloads do you have on that? How many people do you have in your podcast? How many people do you have on your Facebook? What, automatic. What's really cool about the, the podcast itself is that every time we release a new one, all of the previous episodes experience a bump yeah. because what happens is the artists uh, who who are new, unique to the Barncast, uh, pull in their fault. And so their following here is just like, man, that's really cool. And so they they go back through and they get the rest of the episodes and they listen to them. Uh, James Michael Harris, our first non pet and rock uh, barn cat, is still getting downloads and experiences a huge bump every time. You know, every time uh, we release another one. And so it's very cool. Uh, the advertising uh, that would that would potentially be on our show, the mentions that would potentially be on our show, 
are not only getting listened to that first time, but for one, the attention is solely on the barn cast. And two, it gets listened to over and over and over again. So you get the same exposure to people, the same people and many more people over and over again. So you don't have to rely on, say, the, the, the three exposure rule. Uh, you now all of a sudden have somebody who is intently focused and they hear just, for example, Brother's Barbecue, okay, supports the bar case. I'm not saying Brother's Barbecue supports the bar case. I'm just using an example. So, so they hear that and they're listening to it. And because the barn cast is kind of an emotional thing, you know, you've got these local people and it touches you. And you say, man, this is really neat that somebody is, is supporting you. <coughs> and so now you're connected to the barn cast emotionally and you're connected to Brother's Barbecue emotionally. And that is an extremely strong tie. It's so much better than what a 30 second spot on the radio that may or may not be playing during you know work hours or just on your drive when you're already mad, you know. <laughs> and so, so we really feel like each individual listener to the barncast is much more impacted by each impression. You mentioned the numbers. I want to throw out some numbers. Podomatic is what we go through. Out of forty-five thousand podcasts. On Podomatic, we're almost to hit the, five, the top 500. Sweet. Yeah, in six wow. weeks, that's really good. Out of 390, out of 390, it's over 400 in the performing arts category. There's over 400. There's 400 podcasts in the performing arts category, and we're consistently in the top 10. And typically, we go to like three or four. There's two two cats we just can't beat out. But that's pretty good. <laughs> out of 400, you can three out of five. Yeah, so we're really happy with the numbers. The artists. Work of their own. I yes. mean, they're not record, they're not singing somebody else's right. songs. Public domain is okay. Uh, old traditional, something like that is fine. Um, but this is this is like, the way that we that we avoid legal issues like that. Yeah. We uh, we operate on a release uh, system where the artist will sign over the rights not to their song but to their performances on the pod, mm -hmm. on the podcast. And so that way we have all the rights that we need to do to put this out there ad nauseum and, uh, and not have to, you know, not have to, to try and work around all these legal issues. We have, we have enough issues as it is. The music that they're performing, is it more country, pop and rock, Christian? I would say Americana, Americana, folk, country. Uh, At this time, we, is there any way to turn on the? Well, it, it, well, it's. Nah, you don't have to go to the if, website here. Um, no. if, <laughs> the, right now, the acoustic feel of it, which precisely the reason why we got Johnny Keys on here to play electric piano, is to, is to show that we're not necessarily going for strictly acoustic feel. We're going for an analog feel because we feel like analog uh, is much more connected with reality. Yeah, it's fuller, it's a thicker sound. <clears throat> On that note, could you use a 1970 Sony reel to reel gratis? Uh, I want a garage. Yes. Bray has been, yes. been on me to get rid of this for years. I have a Betamax. Yes. Well, <laughs> What's that? We're throwing out old technology. I've got a Betamax and a mini disc. Well, well now, now it's, it's great that you bring up Betamax. <laughs> We're not interested in that. Uh, right now, the the audio uh, portion of it takes enough time to produce, and we, although we have been taking videos of everybody, it's yeah. just been recently Three angles. that that we've actually been getting usable video <laughs> because of our own because of our own inexperience. I am an audio guy. That's my background, and I came here and I got into lighting and stage. Okay. Video is something I always left to those other guys. And now I know enough about it to get into it. And as far as editing goes, stuff like that, this is why we need you know, sponsors. We need people who are software that we need to pay for. 
Uh, right now, Adobe Creative Cloud is so wonderful, but it costs $30 a month. And we're not looking to go broke doing this. Right. Uh, the cameras, you know, you saw, you saw the video. It's not the most awesome quality in the world because we're using what we already have. Right. We didn't want to go broke starting a hobby, you know. And <laughs> if, if this turns out to have been only been a hobby, we're not going to go bankrupt because of it. Yes, sir. Uh, do you currently have any seating capacity at all for live audience? We do. We figured we could probably fit about 30 people in there. Okay, I guess my, my question there is, if this is something that even with 30 people, and you charge an admission for that, that would give you some income. Right. And I think even 30 people, you wouldn't have any problem at all filling that up. I think you're right. You're right. We your brothers so could bring some barbecue and sell it right there on the side. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, just a thought. One of the one of the things that, that we have, as you addressed, uh, we when we've kicked around the idea of of having an audience, we have basically kicked around the idea of having a very limited audience. Yeah. Uh, invitation only. Charge it high. Well, <coughs> either either charging it high or in inviting only twenty people. You know, and saying a donation is you know, uh, accepted. And that's how house concerts typically work. The, and then the artist sells their merch and typically they come out, you know, doing pretty well. Yeah. You got 25 people and they each give you 10 bucks, you know, to see the show, it's 250 plus you're probably selling 100, 200 dollars worth of merch. That's a pretty good night for an artist uh, doing an hour and a half show. Yeah. We, we don't want to try and make it grow too fast trying to make it bigger than what it can than what can support itself and at the same time we would like to see it grow but we want it to grow in reasonable increments i bet you your donations would generate more money yeah. than charging for it yeah i think that's yeah i kind of think yeah. that's true um, yeah. we're uh, we are you know we are businessmen we're trying to make this a go and trying to generate income but at the same time we're trying to be Somewhat altruistic, you know, with these artists, and you know, not just my hope. Have you ever thought about selling tie-dye t-shirts? Yes. Yes, we are in. Uh, we're in talks with uh, a merch supplier, so uh, Barncast t-shirts and our uh, and stickers are. By the uh, way, you are right now too. Since you've started this, are you have you had any uh, uh, have you been contacted by any other songwriters that are out there listening to see if they can connect with some of the people that you're showcasing? Yes. Rick, <laughs> first day we we, we, uh, we we had we did have a tweet favorited uh, by Ricky Skaggs, which sweet. you know the tweet was about Ricky cool. Skaggs. It's cool. However, probably, you know. It was cool that that you know they looked at our Twitter, and uh, now we haven't been using Twitter as much. Although we have Twitter, we have Vine, we have Pinterest, we have reserved the Barncast accounts for all of these social medias, including Snapchat. Uh, we have not been applying all of that yet because even just what we've been doing has, takes, mm -hmm. has been taking a lot of effort and we've gotten such a huge rate of return on Facebook yeah. uh, that, <coughs> that we are at the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we have a, on Facebook, we have a weekly reach in Hopkins County of 2,400, okay? Our posts are seen by 2,400 people reliably uh, on Facebook each week. Now, our, the order of uh, popularity by city is Madisonville, Bowling Green somehow, and we have not done anything to specifically reach out to Bowling Green. Uh, Owensboro is next, and then followed by Henderson, We've also had listeners in Germany, Ireland, Finland, uh, Brazil, Ghana. 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 Nice. Cool. <laughs> well, that, we'll, we'll talk it up when I go to Nicaragua next. Yes. yes. <laughs> Guys, thank you.